Welcome to the special tutorial using version 1.27.4.3 of the JMP mod for Ultimate General Civil War, playing the Union Campaign on Major General Difficulty. There are 38 total battles in the Union Campaign, and with the completion of Fredericksburg, I'm just over half finished with the campaign. This tutorial explains how to get up to 14 two-star units at the camp just prior to Shiloh without manipulating the mod files. Boosting the AI scaling in the AI config file is definitely easier, as I've done it throughout this series. But for anyone that wants to attempt it naturally, without changing the mod files, and without buying vets before disbanding, this guide will help you do that. An updated version of the mod will be released soon, and the training system and resource pools will be overhauled as part of the new release. I'm not sure if I will be able to finish my campaign before the update comes out. So I want to make this tutorial for two reasons. First, for anyone that continues to use this version, it'll give you a path to building a per-crushed army. Second, Pandakraut is interested in methods players can currently use to manipulate the mod, uh, so he has an idea of what to massage moving forward to cut down on exploitations, which I'm sure to try to do when the new version drops too. I'm not going to show any battles in this tutorial. This is more about what I do in camp and less about the strategies on the field. With that said, I fight the battles pretty much the same way as earlier in this series, with these additional strategies included. First, only use your allied units at Distress Call and First Bull Run to support your core units. You want to hog up as much XP as you can by doing most of the killing yourself. Keep the allied units near to help fend off charges or to step up if one of your units gets tired, but do most of the fighting yourself. Second, the battle's lead bonuses for brigade commanders are invaluable at levels 3 and 4 when trying to get to 2 stars, so be cautious. Yes, an officer can become wounded in battle at any time, but the more damage your unit takes, the greater the chance that you'll lose an officer. If one of your units gets lit up by multiple enemy units, then just fall back and regroup. Don't try to push forward and make a bad situation even worse. If you want to replay a battle because you lost an officer, that's up to you. Third. Be aware of which units need to get kills in battle. If you see one with over a thousand kills and another that only has 300, then swap some positions to get your kills for those that don't have them yet. When it comes to clean up gravy time at the end of a battle, send the guys that have the least number of kills up to that point. Fourth, early on the best way to get kills for skirmishers is to have them move with your infantry. And once the infantry gets into a firefight, have your skirmishers assist and leech kills during the skirmish. The CSA should focus on the infantry that it started shooting at to begin with, leaving your skirmisher to fire without getting shot at. If the CSA decides to start shooting at your skirmisher at some point, just fall back and retry. Early on, skirmishers don't do a great job of fighting on their own like they do once they get their third star, so you want to pair them up with your infantry in the early phases. Fifth, and much less important than the previous points, make sure that your units get some exercise during the battle and move around to maximize their stamina. No, don't walk around in circles. Just make sure that they're moving from place to place on the battlefield and not sitting and waiting all game. If the final CSA units are running off into the woods and you need to take time to pursue, then move all of your guys to work on stamina. Besides, with as much fallback as you're going to have to do at Shiloh, you'll be happy that your stamina stat is higher so you can walk further without needing to rest as much. For the sake of saving time, I did not replay Philippi here. I just pulled out the post-Philippi camp from my previous campaign where I took all of the training selections in the campaign setup. The first thing that I did in camp was to put both of my career points from Philippi into army organization to get it to four. Although Distress Call says that you can only take 10 brigades, 12 will actually deploy. Three in the deploy box at the start of the battle and nine more will come in as reinforcements. You want to take 12 units to the distress call and I'll actually make 13 here. I'm going to disband all of the current units and this should put the recruit pool stats up to 28 efficiency, 28 morale, 32 stamina, 32 firearms, and 28 for melee. In this YouTube series, you'll see me buy $40,000 worth of vets prior to disbanding Walton, but it doesn't really change the overall stats that much. You can still build one-star units with the lowest captains without spending that money here. I put a high priority on getting generals into every division commander slot as soon as possible. 
along with putting the highest possible general in my first corps to get a major general as soon as possible. Now, there's an element of luck to what officers spawn in the academy at the start of the game, so the number of generals and colonels available after Philippi and after it resets from first bull run is going to vary from game to game. I currently have two generals in the academy, so I hire Jack Frank and install him as my first corps commander and give him an accuracy perk. I will be buying SP-55s and taking John Gibbon with reputation points. I'll take the ordnance rifles after the stress call. With the training focus boosting up all the stats, having a minus two penalty to the morale is irrelevant here. I give John Gibbon my first division and start making my units. For details on the perks that I use and why, please see my video that reviews unit perks and career points. I'll also put my avatar in charge of 2nd Division and Lewis Wagner in charge of 3rd Division. Now this is very important to understand. There are four total battles leading up to Shiloh. Your existing colonels, Walton, Loomis, Scales, and Woods, can all take a new one-star unit up to two stars in just three battles. Of course, it helps if one of those battles is first ball run since it's a grand battle, but it can still be done just fighting the three side battles if you ensure that those units are right in the middle of the fight. I will giving all my colonels new one-star infantry brigades for a total of four. I divide my Mississippi rifles to make two brigades of 1,354 each. I then divide my SP-55s between two more infantry brigades, and I buy about 18 of them just to round them off to 1,800. I build four artillery batteries, all led by captains. I buy two ordnance rifles and one Napoleon so that each battery ends up with six guns to start with. Your artillery battery should get to two stars in just three battles. I fight Logan's Crossroads before River Crossing, so it's nice to be able to take four two-star artillery units into River Crossing. If you decide to use the smaller six-pound fuel guns, they won't get as many kills, and you either won't make it to two stars, or you'll need to fight in all four battles to get them there. I then build three skirmishers with captains and divide my SP-61s among them. I end up buying two weapons just so they all have 360 to start out. This is also about as high as you can get them before the efficiency penalty starts to kick in. Artillery is by far the easiest units to level, so if a very low captain pops while building my skirmishers and cav, I swap them over to artillery. I suggest that you build one carbine cav unit because they're easier to keep out of harm's way than a melee unit. The catch is that there will be allied carbine cav at distress call and you'll get a bunch of 59 carbine weapons after that battle. Plus, I like to use melee cav in grand battles, so I give this cav unit melee weapons, but I give them a scouting perk. I will use him as melee cav at distress call and first ball run, then swap out his weapons after first ball run. By Logan's Crossroads and River Crossing, who will mainly be spotting for my infantry and supporting with carbine fire. So I have over 1,900 rebores left. I want to take full advantage of the pumped up stats in the resource pool because once new recruits come in after distress call, they'll start pushing the stats back down. And since I'm not using the AI config file to artificially increase the CSA army size, I now want to make my army bigger to make the AI increase his forces too. I have William Brewster and William Brooks as colonels in the academy. Since they are even higher level colonels than my existing ones, they should be able to get a new unit to two stars even quicker. So I hire Brooks and give him all of my rebores. I put the rest of my money in the supply wagon. At distress call, you will be fine with about 10k, even less if you steal the CSA supply wagon. I've gotten away with under 5k knowing that I was going to steal the wagon very early. Now, I don't want Brooks to deploy at distress call, so this is how I avoid that. When the yellow deploy box pops up at the start of distress call, I would clear the units that are there and then put in Scales and Loomis from 3rd Division plus one of my other units. That way I pick the two units that I want from 3rd Division and the AI will just deploy the rest of my units from 1st and 2nd Division. We are now in camp after distress call. The first thing that should pop out to you is that every single captain in my support units went to Lieutenant Colonel every last one of them. I used the allied cav and skirmishers a fair amount 
but most of the Allied infantry just hung out in the back and did counter charge if any CSA units got close enough to melee my units. This is an Excel sheet that shows each unit, their level before and after distress call and the number of kills they got. This isn't an exact number, but generally speaking, based on my testing, if a unit gets between 2,000 and 2,500 kills prior to Shiloh when using this method, they should get their second star. If an officer is wounded or killed, then the number needs to increase. So Loomis's unit started at one star with 30% to second star. He got 668 kills at distress call. So his unit is now at one star, 58% to the second star. You don't have to track it in Excel, just pop open a unit's battles fought report, and as long as they are tracking towards 2,000 kills before Shiloh, they should be good. I now have a decision to make. If I put the point from distress call into army organization, I can then make divisions with six brigades each. Since first bull run takes 12 brigades, then I will control who deploys at the battle. So whomever I put in the third division will sit on the bench and all of first and second division will deploy. However, the victory at first bull run is going to dump 11,700 new recruits into the pool and I will not be able to create new one star units at Shiloh. If I put the career point into training, I'll be very close to being able to create one star units for Shiloh but it'll become very difficult to determine who deploys at first ball run. The game will deploy the five units in first and second divisions, then it will randomly pick two units from third. You could just keep playing around and restarting ball run until you get the two units that you want, but it will likely be a total pain in the butt. Since I want to pick the units that go to first ball run, I put the point in AO. I take the ordnance rifles with reputation points, Again, the morale penalty is irrelevant with a training-focused build. Brooks didn't fight at distress call, but I got some more rebores during the battle, so I give him rookies to bump him up to 2200 and move him up to first core. Since Loomis and Scales are going to set at first boil run, they stay in third division, and I give Scales SP-42s to hold on the sideline. I then use the Mississippis that I took from Scales to create a new infantry unit, and I hire Brewster from the academy to lead them. That gives me the 14th unit that will end up with two stars before Shiloh. With Walton, Woods, Brooks being such large units, I don't need to spend money on hiring vets to replace their losses before they get their second star. I don't want the other three to fight with less than 1,200 men, so I'll probably have to buy vets at some point for each of them. I give my Cav vets to replace his losses, Still with melee weapons because he and the Allied scouting unit will go hunting enemy artillery early on at Bull Run, and I want them to take them down as quickly as possible. Plus, they may have to contend with enemy melee dragoons. I don't have many SP-61s from weapons recovery for my skirmishers, so I just give them enough vets to use up what weapons that I have in the armory without buying any. With nothing in economy, everything is at full price, so you're fighting with whatever we have on hand. I give all four artillery batteries a 7th gun with vets so they don't lose any XP. 3rd division will not deploy, so I build some ballast units with extra weapons that I have in the armory just to try to push up the AI army scaling. I then put 20,000 in the supply wagon. At first bow run, I have my guys do most of the fighting in phase 1. Normally, I would use the allied units to take the initial CSA charges at Matthews Hill. But with having all my units with an accuracy perk and backed up by their three Napoleons and an ordnance rifle, the AI gets his butt kicked at Matthews Hill until he packs up his ball and goes home, not wanting to play anymore. I only have four infantry on the field, so in second and third phase I start using the allied units and their corresponding artillery to handle the CSA right flank while my guys handle the CSA left. The Allied units of Franklin, Wilcox, and Howard have a pretty easy day for a change in the third phase. I just have them rotate in to relieve Sherman and Keyes after their condition degrades from repelling the CSA charges. I also make sure that my CAV take out the enemy Corps commanders via melee because they get a bunch of kills with almost no risk since the Corps commanders don't fight back. Just get them isolated so that nobody flanks with you when you charge them down. Coming out of first bull run, what's the first thing you notice? Every single support unit officer promoted from lieutenant colonel to colonel. So how sweet is that? In just two battles, all of my captains went to colonel. 
Plus, they are all healthy and will start getting meaningful battles led bonuses heading into Logan's Crossroads. Here is the updated Excel sheet of unit progression. Woods and Walton are getting very close. Scales, Loomis, and Brewster have the most work to do. I put both of my career points from first bull run into training. I want to have 10 in training before silo to get those new recruits that come in after that battle to have max stats bonuses. I disband my ballast units because I'm going to make new and much bigger ones. I create my second core using Charlie Doles hired from the academy. I also hire Bradley Owen for first division. At this point, the academy is filled with new officers after Bull Run, so whether I spend the money on them now or in the camp before Shiloh is irrelevant. I know that I'll end up buying all the generals and the colonels for my division commanders anyway, so I just buy a few now. I bump supply up to 25,000. I use my artillery a lot in the next two battles, so I want that thing pretty full. All three divisions will deploy the next two battles. That will also get Lewis Wagner up to general before Shiloh. I use vets and give another gun to each of my Napoleon batteries and run my only ordnance rifle up to 12. I swap some weapons around and bump my skirmishers up to 450 men each using vets. Two of them are using Mississippis and one of them is using Lorenzes. I swap out my KF guns to carbines and use vets to push them up to 450. I leave Walton and Wood's troop levels the same, and they both are carrying SP-55s. I give Loomis the SP-61s that I took from my skirmishers and used vets to increase them to 1,400. Loomis and Scales did not fight at first bull run, so they are only fighting in the three side battles, so I want them to have the best weapons available because they have a lot of work to do to get to their second star. Brooks is just fine with his numbers and using the rebores. Lastly, I have a bunch of extra muskets, SP-42s, and 6-pound guns, so I made three large ballast units to try and increase the AI army size. There are no allies in the next two battles, so I fight them just like the battles in this series. I do keep an eye on who has the least amount of kills and make sure that they get more kills during the cleanup at the end. So coming out of Logan's Crossroads, I have seven two-star units. That includes all four artillery batteries, one of my skirmishers, Woods, and Walton. Keep in mind that those units have fought in all three battles up to this point. Powell was only four points short of getting his second star here. Eustace, MacArthur, Scales, Loomis, and Brewster are all in the 80s, so they should be able to make it during the next battle. Brewster and Brooks both made general. Brooks is so close that I swear his unit could probably fall asleep underneath the trees at River Crossing, get up and walk to each VP and still get a second star. I put my career point in training so it is now maxed. The one point that I get from River Crossing will eventually go into Army Organization. I take Irvin McDowell with reputation points. I also hire Colonels Franklin and Henselman from the Academy. I disband my ballast units again and move Woods, Walton, and Marshall to Second Corps and give all three of them muskets to hold on the sidelines because they won't be going to River Crossing. I'm taking all four artillery batteries to River Crossing just because it makes life easier at the beginning of that battle, although I do turn them off after the first VP is secure and the CSA is no longer charging so my other units can harvest the kills. I only turn the guns back on to blast enemy skirmishers when they pop up. I put all of them in 3rd Division to help Wagner get the XP he needs to get to General. I use Vets to push Powell and MacArthur up to 500 each, and Eustace up to 550. Brooks, Brewster, and Loomis are fine just the way they are. I give Scales enough Vets to get him back up to 1300. McDowell, Franklin, and Henselman are not going to make general here, but if I can get them some XP to go to division commanders, then they might make it there after Shiloh. I am giving them huge oversized units to pump up AI scaling while getting those new recruits some experience so that when I disband them after the battle, the recruit pool points will go up. I had hoped it would be enough to offset not taking a training point before first bull run so I can make one-star units at the Shiloh camp, but it doesn't work out that way. 
Here is the Excel sheet showing the final push to get the other seven units up to two stars at River Crossing. You can full clear at River Crossing, you just need to pace yourself to do it. See my battle in this series for details. Post River Crossing, you can see that I got my other seven units to two stars, so that gives me a total of 14. The CSA skirmishers were worse than usual at the battle. My skirmishers have spotting out to 1300 yards, yet I couldn't see enemy skirmishers that were out in open terrain that were only 500 yards away. So I called bullshit on that one. My skirmish hairs have the same perk with 50% stealth, and they didn't go unspotted out in the open at 500 yards. The enemy skirmishers also had 56 Enfields, giving them 500 yard range, and there was just nothing that I could do about it but to expose mine to fire to get them close enough that my artillery could fire on them. I needed to span the ballast units uh, because I need all of those weapons to build my army for Shiloh. The recruit pool average before disbanding is 27 per stat, and after it goes up to about 28, so not enough for one star units, even while using majors. You would have to use lieutenant colonels or above. If you really wanted to build one star units here for Shiloh, assuming that the three ballast units are already disbanded, uh, I think you have three options. First, you could disband Brooks and Brewster, just as they are, and use them for division commanders. This would push up the stats in the recruit pool high enough that you could build new one star units with captains, and you'd still have 12 two star units. It would cost you no money. You're basically trading two-star units for about 20 to 30 one-star units, depending on how many you decide to make a camp. Captains are pretty cheap to use. Option number two, you could keep Brewster, then spend money on vets to push Brooks up to 2,500 men. You'll need to swap him to SP-42s to avoid buying weapons. The vets will cost 19774 to do it. Then disband him and you'll be able to make one stars with captains. This gives you another general as a division commander. And you trade about 20k in a single two star unit for the ability to make 20 to 29 one star units. I mean you couldn't buy another general in the academy for 20k even if there was one to buy. So it's not such a bad deal. Option number three. Brooks's unit is high enough that you could put McDowell in that unit and keep them at two stars. Then use Vets to run Brewster's crew up to 2,500 and disband him. It'll cost you about 25,000. It basically gives you two generals for 25K, plus you get to keep one of the two stars and still be able to make 20 to 29 other one star units. So it just depends on how you want to do it. So I've picked option three and I'll leave you with what a possible army could like going into Shiloh with 13 two-star units. Whatever you decide, enjoy your campaigns. Thank you for watching, and I hope this video was helpful. Feel free to leave any questions in the comments below.